Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 15th of September, 2021. Uh, thrilled to have everyone here. A uh, reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct, be nice to each other while we're interacting, et cetera. So by way of a gender review, I had proposed to put a pull request monitoring plugin status in hopes that Simon would be able to join us. He isn't here, so I'm gonna move that down further. Yeah, I think um, we can skip that topic or... Great, yeah, and uh, if we can, if, we, if he's available, Uli, as far as I understand it, he may have completed his master's program now and is out, out in the working world. Not yet. Uh, I, I think he wanted to, to, to continue with the master because he has now a bachelor and then the next step is the master. But he said that he's not sure if he really starts it. So let's ah, see. Okay, got it. So, that, so the, the project he was working actually was a bachelor project, not a master yeah. project. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. All right. So I wanted to give Uli some time to talk about the code coverage UI improvements that he's envisioning and that have started discussion already in the community thread. And then I had put a placeholder in to talk about pipeline graph view. What I was thinking of doing is I can just show, show that and we can use it as a talk topic so that, uh, so that Jake and Patty can see where it's going as a possible blue ocean replacement. Anything else that should be on our agenda for today? Okay, Uli. And uh, I think the best thing would be uh, if I share my screen. Okay, let me stop sharing and there we go. So. Okay, now you should see uh, the code coverage view, the old one. Um, and I'm planning to yeah, rewrite a lot of the code coverage plugin in the next yeah, couple of weeks. And a student uh, at our university is trying to improve uh, the coverage uh, plugin as well not on the UI side, but on the model side. What we want to introduce is some kind of a delta coverage computation. Currently, you see the code coverage of your project in the current state. But what is more interesting for me is to provide some details about the delta coverage from a pull request. So you see how many or how you improve the coverage or decrease the coverage, uh, which lines you covered, which lines you did not cover from the current pull request, not the overall project. So maybe here in this diagram, you already have this chart, which is a little bit meaningless. You have always the straight lines uh, where nothing really happens. And that's if you are in a project with good shape, um, a small pull request will not change very much. So we should more focus on the delta. And in order to visualize the delta, we need to change the model because the model currently computes the totals and that's all. And in order to compute some deltas, we need to change the model. So this is planned starting from October. And in order to have a good start for this project. I tried to refactor the code coverage API plugin and I refactoring it both on the model side and on the UI side. So the screen you are seeing now is the current implementation, which is uh, on our yeah, CI uh, instance uh, available to everybody. And what we see here is Basically, we have a trend chart in this details view. We have this over coverage view. And this uh, screen needs a little bit improvement, I think. So I started to refactor it. And what I've done is uh, I basically added two different things. So the first thing is I added uh, a 
cold coverage trend chart. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So, no. And now the refresh is broken. Okay. <laughs> Still a bug. So it's not yet finished. <laughs> um, so what I added is, uh, first of all, a, a code coverage trend chart where you see the how the line and branch coverage is behaving in your project. And this is one thing which I have added already. And I'm also using e-charts and the chart configuration that I'm using in the warnings plugin. So yeah, all these charts are now yeah, look quite similar. So what I re have removed from the main screen is uh, the yeah, the project uh, views should show the trend of your project and not the current state. So here you see the trend. And when you want to see the current state, you need to select one of your builds and click. And then you see uh, the new uh, details view. And this detail view is um, a little bit uh, expanded or extended. So what I try to introduce here is, uh, first of all, I'm using also Bootstrap here uh, to, uh, to show the elements in some cards. Um, I still need to rearrange it a little bit. So this is uh, not yet finished uh, because, first of all, I wanted to build the building blocks. And then I need to see how to show on a big screen or how to show on a small screen. So that is not yet finished. So I just implemented the parts and the first part is this is already part of the existing plugin just an overview but for me as an architect this overview is yeah not what i'm quite interested i'm more interested in the detail view for my classes so what i have added is this chart where you see uh, all your classes in a tree view so yeah, maybe this needs a bit explanation. It's a little bit complicated this graph. So you have two things you need to look at. So first of all, we have packages. For instance, here we have the IO Jenkins plugins for N6 minor package. And here we have the next package. So we have packages and the, the building blocks are classes. And the coloring of these classes show the uh, code coverage in percentage. So a green means we have about 90% code coverage. The red one means, yeah, we have zero code coverage and so on. So the coloring still needs to be improved. Uh, so this is my first attempt just to see that you have a feeling which class has how many code coverage. So, um, so what is maybe I, sorry, I switched into another report where we see it a little bit better in, in another project for me. So this is a project that has a really good code coverage. And for me as an architect, it's important to see which parts need to be improved. So I can focus on the red things here. So green is everything fine. So I don't have to look into so, but here we have some red market so if i press here we have this tree chart which navigates to these classes which have no code coverage currently or which have a bad code coverage this one has 75 percent but this one has 100 percent so i can select more easily which are the pain points in my project and which are yeah, let's say the good things so this needs a little bit more investigation for bigger projects. So I'm using it currently for my projects only. So it's you can't see the names anymore for the classes, but you can always click into the details and then it is zooming automatically and you can make it smaller and you move around. Uh, this is already provided by eCharts. So this is nothing I program. This is just from the library I'm using. So, so this, sorry, yeah. 
that project. Zoom, that Zoom and pan functionality you got just because you'd already chosen to use eCharts as the as the implementation. Yes. So this is basically for free. And the only thing what I provided is a tree model where I render my project in a tree and each node has a coverage. So I have a node for the project, a node for the packages, and a node for the files, a node for the classes. And I stopped here at the class, uh, at the file level. Uh, but if you want to go into details, you could also see the, the classes and the methods if you want. But I did not use it yet. So because for me, or when I'm looking at my projects, I'm more interested in in the classes and not in the methods. Yeah. So, so this is a total new new view, which is available then. And and that view is a thing of beauty to me. I'm used to using that kind of a view to look at disk space use on my computer. And I love those those sorts of views because they help me very quickly identify. So the size of the block is the is the number of lines in the source I, file? Yeah, yes, good. I, I forgot to mention that. Yes, the number of lines. Okay, so the so the when I see a big red block here, that's yeah. hinting to me low coverage, large source file. Yeah. A small red block is low coverage, small source file. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Wow. But this is something the library does for me. So I just provide the the tree and the tree has two values the number of lines of the class and the other value is the percentage of percentage of the coverage so what not what is not yet implemented would be something if i click here it would be helpful if i see more details for the selected file but uh I didn't get it yet uh, because currently the click is interpreted for the Zoom. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I need to figure out how to I can register an additional event. Ah, okay. So so I was curious what the action was. The action you took to do the Zoom is actually a click, not yeah. something with a scroll. Okay. So yeah, so you can use my as my uh, on my Zoom bar here uh, on my Mac. I can use. Uh, bigger and as a, to make uh, the pinch and or pen how, how do you call it yeah and but you can also click and then the selected element will be put into the middle or in the center so this view is uh, or the idea of this view is also used by uh, coral cover alls and this uh, i don't know let's say let me show you um Sorry, uh, the idea behind these views is from CodeCov, where we can see our code coverage from open source projects. They use a sunburst diagram, but it's kind of similar. So I think it would be helpful if we have this in Jenkins as well, and not so we don't need an external provider for this information. Okay. This is gorgeous, Uli. Thank you. I so so in order for me to see that. So I you mentioned that you tend to focus on on the the which things are most in need of coverage. I tend to focus on I think what's the next section down the coverage detail yeah. of all files. Yeah. Okay. I tend to look at the statement level, mm -hmm. but but I think what you're saying is I wouldn't be able to click in the coverage overview yet. But yeah. I can see statement level by clicking in the coverage details of all files. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the third uh, view. So um, actually, as I already mentioned in the beginning, uh, I'm not sure how to place these three views. If I use uh, different panels on the left and right, or if I use tabs. So this needs to be looked at. I I'm not sure how to make this. But the uh, oops, this, uh, the third part is uh, kind of similar to the warnings plugin where you see all your files in a table. So you so now here this is only forty files. It's a small project. Maybe we go back to the my other project. 
So here we have, um, let's say, uh, 300 files. And if you want to see the coverage of these files, it's the same as in the warnings plugin. You can select for, for instance, press Eclipse here in the search field. And then you have all your four classes, which somehow about the Eclipse parser. And then you see in, in a short view the line coverage and the branch coverage of these uh, elements. So this is something which is maybe better to work with this table you because you want to look at your files you may you can sort the files by let's uh, by coverage or here by coverage so yeah it depends on what you are trying to achieve and here you see the file names and here you can also um, let's let's look some at here mm, yeah. I think we take this one. Uh, if you select them, then you go into uh, now the source queue. It's not here. Uh, seems to be still a bug. I, I already implemented that. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see if it's here. Mm -hmm. Well, but the, the, the concept is that I would be able to see the source code in that uh, through one click from the coverage ah, yeah. details. Ah, OK. Um, since I'm currently uh, developing very heavily, this is an old data which is which not which has not the source code available yet, but this one has. So sorry for jumping back and forth. So this is just a different project where I enabled the source code view, and and here if you click on, for instance, this file, you see the source code view and. This is the view I, I've taken from the old plugin, though so this is not uh, no new implementation. I just put it in a card to make it a little bit prettier, but the rest is uh, the old view. So here you see the green parts are the lines which are covered and the red ones which are not covered. But I did not change this. This is basically the same code as before. Um, the idea is it now we have just two levels of views because in the old plugin we had the level of project then a group then package then source code and you need to click i think seven steps until you see the source code and a lot of people didn't find the source code because they didn't know how where to click okay you need to configure it that's a point but if you configure it it's really hard to find and now you have just two clicks or not two clicks but uh, two views you have the, the top level view with this three parts and then you can click on any source code let's yeah, it doesn't matter click here and you see immediately your source code so that's basically the changes I made to the user interface. Um, I think there are a lot of uh, small things which need to be improved now. Um, some, yeah, layout, how to show it on a small screen and a big screen. But yeah, I think I wanted to start with the building blocks to make them ready and then we need to improve uh, step by step and uh, that's brilliant so where where would you like feedback on these kind of things i know you'd started the conversation in community.jenkins.io is is that and is are you at a point where you want people to play with the code or you're still deep in development and aren't ready yet for anyone else to experiment with it yeah uh, currently it's not yet for so uh, currently it's not yet uh, ready to uh, yeah to be used by someone else so uh, I, I thought it would be helpful to discuss it in community but then i noticed <laughs> i even posted it in the GitHub channel of the code coverage api but nobody responded so i thought uh, it's maybe better if the people can uh, see it on their machines and then report about what to change so my plan currently is to finish it in a in, in a stable way by the end of this month 
and then I want to publish it in a new public release of the plugin. And I would like to uh, provide it as kind of, uh, I, I would like to have the old screen in place and add the new screen as an additional screen. So you see the old results. And if you are not happy with the new results, you still see the old results, but you can see the new results and can already have a look at it. I will, maybe I add a feature flag to disable it or something like that. So we can have both views side by side. So nobody else uh, misses something which was working before. And we can discuss it on a live object. It's better than on slides or something else. Yeah. This looks brilliant, Uli. Thank you. What, what an improvement to the to the experience. I, I'm one of those embarrassed people who has to say I didn't use the new plugin for line level co coverage viewing because I couldn't find the, the link to click. I yeah. failed to understand that it was even there. And so I kept using the old one. And mm -hmm. now you've shown that, hey, I can switch to the new one and use it. Thanks. Yeah. Any different uh, other questions from for this thing? Not really questions, but I, I'm I'm just shocked and impressed by this because this is just awesome. One of the uh, products I used to manage was a code coverage tool for mainframe source code, so it was COBOL and assembler and stuff like that. But the the visualization is is so powerful, um, and I echo um, Patty's question in the chat there. She um, asked, you know, is there a need to see all three at the same time? Um, all three views, like uh, if you go back one screen to okay. the more chart view. Um, yeah, I think this is awesome. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. Yeah, this looks uh, really good. And as someone who is, uh, you know, probably in my last two jobs was the first two jobs in my 10 year career of using code coverage for unit tests, um, which I'm sad to say. Uh, this looks really great. And when you were talking about, you know, for the cards, do you do tabs? Do you do columns? Do you do accordions? Um, that's kind of what made me think of the, you know, do you actually need to see all three of them at the exact same time? Or could you do some type of like toggle to say, like, if I, you know, because we, I think probably all three of us have a different use, use case that we would be viewing this for. And is it something that I could say, you know, I'm an architect, I need to see it at this level, let me turn that on. And now I can see that uh, panel on the UI um, or, you know, are we thinking, well, no, everyone needs to see all three of these at the same time because they give different levels of detail. Um, but I think it looks really good. And I'm curious actually, if you are thinking that this will, you're going to release it for October, are you thinking this would be something that would be, uh, an interesting use for Hacktoberfest maybe um, to help you with some of that um, alignment stuff for, for seeing all of the graphs. That would be fine, yeah? I think we need, uh, always need a lot, a lot of good opportunities for people to help uh, in Hacktoberfest. So this is a UX, user interface thing and sometimes we only have Java programmers, sometimes we have only C programmers, and sometimes we have Java script programmers, and here they could help very much, yeah. Uh, I, I wonder if you'd be willing, Uli, Saturday morning, October 2nd, we're going to do the, uh, con the Contributor Summit for Europe and Asia Pacific. That'll also be our introduction to Hacktoberfest. Would you be interested in presenting a segment on this, both as, hey, here's something new we've got. And if you're open to contributions from others, you could you could then describe how they could contribute. Now, if you're not open, if you're not, not at the point where you're ready for others to contribute, that's okay too. But are you interested in, in that or is it still premature? No, I think um, the good thing is uh, it is, uh, I, I want to, 
developing side by side so you can't break anything because yeah you still have the old view and my student starts in october as well so it, it needs to be ready <laughs> and i want to have it him in a in a good shape the project so um and i think uh, there are a lot of small improvements uh, where i actually don't have the time so i'm happy that it is now working and uh, so even if someone else has uh, the idea for instance uh, let me show a, a small example so um what i i've pre prepared here uh, is this table where i have two columns which are called line coverage where we have the color and for instance the percentage in in the number and this is fine for me now to 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 make the student happy to start his work but in order to have a good ui it would be helpful if we can combine these views and and this takes a little bit time for someone um, but you don't have to have much knowledge about the whole project so some ui skills would be helpful and then you can make a better column for instance or you can add some tool tips here or, or some small things there are a lot of things you can help so i think it would be good uh, if i present it here on on the on saturday was it on morning in my time or morning in uh, morning your time 7 a.m utc so okay. early morning your time middle middle dark of my night <laughs> but intentionally focused on reaching india in the middle of the day yeah okay yeah that would be fine i will can make a demo and uh, some at some topics. Excellent. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Well, uh, what that super launch to Hacktoberfest and a good thing for the Contributor Summit to show, look, here's here's a, a, a an exciting piece of user interface improvement that's happening and here's somebody leading it. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A question for you, and maybe um, this is a naive, dumb question, but it, it, have you thought of maybe combining these bottom two views? Um, would that make sense? One, I mean, as you keep digging down into the into the more graphical one, you know, eventually you get to the the line coverage of the of the class or of the of the of the methods. Um, so instead of like two views here. Um, yeah. Have you, have you has that crossed your mind or is that a, a dumb question no uh, that's i think it's i think it's helpful to have this tree view and on the other side i'm using in the warnings plugin quite a lot often the only the table so i'm sometimes i don't need uh, charts at all I, i'm just want to sort by by coverage and select uh, the things which yeah maybe we click here where I see immediately which file needs to be improved. So I think both views typically show the same information in a different way. This is the tabular way, and this is the tree way. So let's uh, render it again. So um, I think um, it makes sense to show either this one or this one, and not both together. So. Maybe it's helpful to have a toggle or a tab. So one user prefers the tree view and the other users prefer the table view. So yeah, actually I'm yeah. not really sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was kind of my thought is two tabs, right? Some people are more visual, yeah. some people want just the, the raw data table view. So yeah, now that's great. With the with the um, the red background in the in the top visual, would that change to green if all the boxes were green inside of it yeah, yeah. this is uh, the package uh, the line coverage of the package is only 35 percent so it's uh really bad maybe we can skip to the uh to the good project uh, so here you see the the this level is uh 95 percent and therefore it's uh, green so I experimented a lot of with the colors. It's really hard uh, to find colors. And then I noticed this uh, view is not colorblind safe. So 
um, if someone is colorblind, you you don't won't see a difference between red and green. Um, so, so I've got the table. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think at least for now we have a table. <laughs> yeah, would <laughs> be an idea, and yeah, maybe we need to make the palette somehow configurable, which it is not yet. So it's just the first implementation will be a fixed palette, but I think we can improve it by making it configurable. So one can select, for instance, a totally different color, or even not here, green and red. We can just choose red and white for what white is good and red is bad or something like that. So, yeah. Awesome. Now, uh, so this this particular project looks like it's got on the order of hundreds of hundreds of classes. What about a project the size of Jenkins Core, for instance, with probably thousands of classes? Yeah. Is this kind of presentation is the is the coverage overview by package and file? Does it shrink and and, and expand based on the size of the thing? Yeah, uh, you see here it's. Uh... On this part here, you only have the blocks, and I don't know how it will look like if you are having Jenkins, but we need to try. Mm. And I, okay. I never tried it, so I just used it in my projects. But um, maybe we need to, maybe we can have some triggers uh, to show only packages if we are in Jenkins or in a project with a lot of classes. And now on the coverage details, the search field that you used earlier seems crucial to me because frequently yes. I know I know a specific class or substring that I want to be looking for. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a viable thing to include in the visual, in the graphical presentation, in the upper in the in the coverage overview by package and file, or not really? It doesn't make sense to do a tree view. Of a, of a subset. Oh, you mean here? Uh, a yeah. Sub yeah. This would be an option as well, yeah. I, I but, think you have not only as this, I'm currently using a tree with one root, but I think one, we can place, a, I think it's called forest with a lot of uh, roots. And maybe we have a filter with where we select the package, for instance, and show only the package which has been searched by. Thank you. Okay, so so it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility available and mm -hmm. some concepts, some powerful concepts there. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that what you were kind of just talking about that search feature on that more visual one, it would kind of aid in in your bigger projects, right? Like in you know, with that one with all the tiny little squares, you don't know you know where it's at. You'd be searching quite a bit for the one you're looking for. You probably know, have a better idea, of, you know, I do of to where it is. But if yeah, if you can search and it would almost do that zoom in for you, um, that would be really cool. Yeah, and I think what would be also helpful is, uh, and this is the master thesis we are starting now, if we look at the difference or the changes you actually made in one pull request. So maybe we show only blank uh, boxes here and only the green and red boxes are the boxes where, which have been changed in a pull request, for instance, this would something else. Yeah, the, the Delta coverage concept sounds sounds really challenging to me in terms of presentation because you're trying to you're telling me you're trying to convey to me that this pull request that i just that just arrived had a change from a base branch right so that's that's now how do you present to me which things are unchanged which things went down and which things went went which things improved wow could it be similar um you know, I know um, IDEs and things like that. When you make code changes, right? They have the compare view. It shows the older, the older source and the newer source, and it has the line, you know, connections as to what exactly changed. I think something like that might be useful to show um, the delta view. 
Cool. Uli, this is beautiful. Thank you very, very much. Is there other that you you wanted to describe on this? Other things that you wanted to, to discuss? Um, I think currently not. <laughs> I think the discussion will start if I roll it out and everybody can use it, and then we see ah, this is missing or yeah. I think it's the best thing to test it on your own project. Excellent. Super. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to put you into the into the contributor summit as a as a topic to be discussed and highlighted as new capabilities coming and Hacktoberfest contribution interested so that people who are seeing it can say, ah, if I want to do Hacktoberfest, I should attend. And especially in this case, it looks like JavaScript skills would be a, a good thing here and UI skills. So if they want to do UI things, this is this is a good place to be as opposed to not the Git plugin, that's Java only, that kind of thing. Good. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thanks very much. And I think that covers all the topics we had, given the time that we're at, I'm prone to, so we could do pipeline graph view if you'd like, I could show quickly where it's at, but I'm not sure that I'm the best demonstrator of it. I'm happy to show it. Um, Jake, if you'd like to see that, we can, we can do a brief discussion of that, or we could just call that we're done for today and, and go forward. What's your preference? You know, maybe we can take it offline and we, you know, we can set something up and, and go through it, but um, that, okay. That, yeah, I think I'm good for today. Great. Uli, are you okay if we... Yes, I already know the few. A little bit. <laughs> so, right. So a demonstration of pipeline graph view to you isn't much of a help. So, yes. so Jake, you and I, I'll take you up separately and we'll, we'll show it separately then. That's fine. That's, that's excellent. Great. Uli, thanks very much for, for your work on code coverage. I propose then let's go ahead and call it a close for today. And we will we'll meet again. We won't meet in two weeks because that collides directly with, with uh, DevOps world. Mm -hmm. But we will meet again. Regular schedule, I believe, would now be four or six weeks from now. Is that right, Uli? I think six weeks. So six weeks out because we meet once a month. Yeah. Um, we, we would, of course, meet October 2, not as a UX SIG, but as part of the Contributor Summit. That's fine. That's great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very, very much. I'll post the recording. Okay. It may be a while. I'm badly behind on posting recordings. Thanks, everybody. Okay, bye. Bye.